No, they love it and they're taxed for it. If it paid its own weight through operations, you would have a good, uh, good idea. In my world, we take this huge tax subsidy and give it to the tax uh, or to the transit dependent, people without cars and let them choose how they want to spend it. Maybe they want to spend it to buy a car, maybe they will spend it to, to ride RTD at full price. I don't think RTD would, would, would survive too long. My point being that when you look at rail though, it doesn't help the environment, and you did an interesting editorial on that. Uh, it doesn't help traffic, and you've looked at that as well, but people love it. They love it, love it, love it. Well, let me agree on one thing, they love it. But let me ask this, if we've been promised it twice, why in the world should we buy it a third time? But it's the responsibility then of any public agency to go back and ask the question. And that's what we're really talking about, is that, is that you go back, go back to the public and say, do you want it now or do you want it later? Is that the only question to ask? Or is it possible to ask the question, is it time to rethink this? Is it time to prioritize what we want to do and go one line at a time instead of this wonderful bit of let's build everything at once so everybody comes on in a big kumbaya. The, the reason that RTD won was that every city was going to get built out at the same time. So the guy who would be last on the list, maybe Aurora, uh, they would be up, up front with everybody else. That's wonderful. We can't afford that. Is it time to go back to say that we only ask for tax increases? Maybe it's time to go and ask, should we completely rethink this? I, Give me your thoughts on both of them. I, I agree with the latter. I think you've got to hit the reset button and go back to the drawing board. Um, rail costs an extremely large amount of money to put in place. And once it's in place, it's in place you know, forever. And when you, when you start looking at fast tracks and you realize that even by um, Dr. Cog's projections, when it's fully built and the year 2035 rolls around, it still takes a very small percentage, less than 3% of traffic off the road riders, you know, per ridership mile. That's a very small amount of people um, being served. Even now in Denver, we, we, we have these beautiful trains that you talk about, and they are, they are gorgeous, and a city should have an effective mass transit system. Um, in any given day, only 29,000 trips are taken on RTD fast track trains, or light rail trains. It's closer to 70,000 a day. That was not the figure that I had the last time that I looked. Um, even, even if it is. Even, if, even it is, if it is. It's far below the number of cars that you've got driving um, and far below the number of, of bus trips that are being recorded. Buses have a great advantage that you don't have to stick with a particular bus route forever. You can move it around as your, chi as your city changes. And we know that populations shift and move around and different parts of town become popular. Um, buses would seem like they make pretty good sense. And with the buses that they've got now, they can be far more environmentally friendly. They can run on uh, renewable fuels. They can be replaced every 10 years, whereas fast tracks, again, is you're stuck with it for, for a generation no, actually, or so. Remember, tracks need to be pulled up every 20, 20, 20 25, 30 years. So to, when you build something, yeah, it's, they're it's, still maintenance. it's, it's, still it's, quite it's not the pyramids. Sure. Right, you need right. to replace them. But you can't move them around. You're, you're stuck with them. Um, it just seems like given the fact that fast tracks couldn't be built on the schedule that it was going to be built, given the fact that it doesn't really re reduce congestion like, like we had hoped it was going to, and given the fact that as it turns out, because of uh, our coal-based electrical grid, it's not even that good for the environment compared to cars, I just wonder if you should rethink uh, and rescale the project going forward. I'll bring it over to Transit Alliance. Now, you've worked for, for, for fast tracks. Is it time to ask a different question? Can we go back to zero, go back to the drawing board, and reconsider doing this as a priority base, saying, well, let's do it one line at a time. Or will you go forward, will RTD go forward and just ask for the money like RTD does all the time? Well, again, the mass transit system, I think, is a critical piece to this. Uh, the bus argument is, is one that has been put before the public time and time again. The Fast Tracks vote in 2004 said, we want rail. And then five years of working and having a dialogue with the public to say what is the technology that makes the most sense. These are the federal environmental processes that look at how you start to weave that transit component within the fabric of your own community. And as you look at that, people have continually said that they want rail. So people want it, they support it. It's a wonderful answer to a question I didn't ask. Let me try this again. 
Is it time, given that RTD cannot deliver what it promised in 2004, on the timetable it promised in 2004, is it time, instead of just asking for a tax increase, instead to go back to the blackboard and come up with a new transit plan? And again, RTD has been working with the general public so the answer is over no. the over the last five years to ask that question continually. What Have is your that answer dialogue. to the question? I'm asking you. I'm looking at you. Should we go back to the blackboard and reset? No. Why not? The work that has been done, the voters have spoken. We're here as an organization that helps support the public, and they have said they want rail. When you say that the voters have spoken, it's a two-way street. RTD spoke as well. RTD made a promise to this community, a promise that even the idiots at the Independence Institute could realize was a fraudulent promise. This is not new. It happened 35 years again for something that they didn't deliver. How in the world is RTD going to convince this community that this time they really mean it? Without a doubt, Fast Tracks is moving forward. They've had five years of investment in every corridor. There are four projects and components of Fast Tracks that are already underway. Construction is going on as we speak. And everything is ready with shovels in the ground at the end of 2010. The voters have had an opportunity in 2004 to say, we want this program. They've had an opportunity since then. The latest polling data showed 83% of people, regardless of how they voted in 2004, believe that fast tracks and transit, particularly rail transit, is something that they see as a and critical component of the region I and how we grow. I love it too. And if money fell off of trees, I'd get one from house to house. I've only got a couple minutes left. Um, in 1997, when RTD first put forward this process, the, the companies that pay, or that gave the money for the contributions to the election raised about $600,000. My team, we raised like $20,000. We won. 2004, those special interests, the guys like Siemens Corporation that makes the, the trolley cars, gave $100,000. Well, of course they'd give $100,000. They received so far $57 million worth of contracts. It was a good investment. All in all, in 2004, the pro Fast Tracks side raised nearly $4 million. Now, how in the world, given that they will raise that kind of money again because it's, it's guaranteed money, how in the world are people in the Denver metro area going to get a fair shot at this? What, what do you think is going to happen when they come up and ask for yet more money? In terms of ad campaigns? In front of the campaign. Will it pass? I, I've been saying all along this, this discussion that I think that it's going to be an uphill climb because voters, um, a lot of things are going on right now. and The economy is down. People are getting a little bit tired being asked for more of their, of their tax money. Um, and it's going to, the opponents are going to have a very good argument when they say, well, this thing costs you know, nearly twice as much as you said it was going to cost, and we weren't able to build it. Um, so now you want to double the tax? To, how, do, how, do we, how can we trust that if we double the tax, it's, it's going to work? You are going to be able to provide it again. People want more information about the Transit Alliance. Where is it that they should go? Transitalliance.org. And there they will find? There they'll find information about our organization and an opportunity to learn more through our Citizens Academy. When is RTD likely to go and ask me for more money? I'm not sure that I know that. They're working very closely with the Regional Coalition of the But mayors. they'll be asking. Kathleen, thank you. Chuck, thank you. Thank you. Tell a friend about the Independence Institute. We'll see you next week. You jab a jab, bamboos on your canoes, all pepperty pop she call. I mean, you keep on talking, but you don't know where to turn it off.